if you have the a different answer than me and it's close, then you're probably okay. If you're off by a mile, then you're probably not okay. If you're off by a mile, but you wrote down everything I wrote down, then your problem is it with your calculator, which is of course not a concern for me because you have all year to practice with your calculator, right? Right. So before I go on, let me ask this. Uh, would anybody like to volunteer? Not what they did, just their answer to number one. Anybody? We are on page 39. You heard the man. 39. Dana? 191.25 hours. That is its terrific answer. Could we make that answer any better? I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying, could we make that answer better. There's something wrong only with the what, what Dana has said. How do, we, how do we measure hours? In minutes, In minutes which are fractions of what? 60. 60. What? 60. So a quarter of an hour, because 0.25 is a quarter of an hour. If, we were, if I was being like a real stickler meanie, 191 hours, 15 minutes. Everybody cool? Understand, that's my only complaint about that. I haven't said if it's right or wrong, but if you were to submit me with an answer in an open-ended question, this would be fine, this would be fine, so would dividing that by 24 and getting me the days, which comes out to 7 days, 23 hours, and 15 minutes. Okay? All those would be fine. Now, does anybody have a different number? Good, because that is the exact right number. Good job. And anybody else who got 191.25. Now, Dana, I don't wish to put you on the spot, but would you be so kind as to explain how you came to that answer? Um, I, uh, well, I was like the, uh, um, well, I multiplied by 6. Mm-hmm. average depth. So I'm going to paraphrase if that's all right. So uh, Dana found she did 15 times six to get this, right? Because that she has decided to call the base because that rectangle, if this were a flat pool, would repeat downwards. Yes. And then she looked at it and said, but it's not a flat rectangle, but if I go 8 plus 1 divided by 2 and get 4.5, that would flatten it out at an average depth of 4.5. So if I go 15 times 6 times 4.5, that would be the area of the base times the height. Yes? And that got the exact answer. Perfect. Worked fine. Great. Did anybody do something different? What did you do, Emma? Because you got the right answer too. So Emma took this rectangle prism and then the bottom triangle prism and found the two volumes and added them together and then did that. Nice. Anybody do anything else? All right. Uh, I would like to submit to you a third idea. If I was... How many of you have been on a cruise ship? Any, any of you? Did it, was one of the cruise ships where the swimming pool had glass in the side and you could watch people swimming around? Or you've been to the aquarium, yes? Pretend this was an aquarium and this is ground level, yes? And here I am looking at the side of the aquarium. Does that not mean that this shape right here would also be on the back wall? Okay, so if that shape right there would be on the back wall, doesn't that shape repeat? And if it repeats, doesn't that make the direction of its repetition the height? So if you found just the blue area, which you'd still have to do what Emma did, you'd have to cut it in half and find a rectangle and a triangle, and then multiply that by six, you would also get the volume. Is everybody with me? Because that shape repeats. 
Everybody cool? Okay. I really like your way. That's cool. Um, nobody in the many, 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 many times I've assigned this question has done that. I like that. Um, but there was a problem here. You had to pay attention that it was only 85%. Yes. So once you got the volume, which was, I believe, 405, you had to multiply by 0.85 to get 344.25 meters cubed. Yeah? Yeah. And then you had to divide that by, what was it, 1.8. So that's what you had to do. Next question. Would anybody like to give me their answer to B? Again, not what you did, just an answer. I know two people did the work. Did anybody else? Did anybody else do the work but doesn't want to say the answer because they think they got it wrong? That would still make me very happy. Hmm, I see. Okay, so what was the volume of the pool that we knew? We just did the work. You've seen the right answer. What was the volume of the pool that we got? 344.25 meters cubed, yes? The measurement we have is centimeters cubed, yes? So I have to somehow rectify the situation that has meters cubed and centimeters cubed there. What must I do? I could convert the centimeters cubed to meters cubed, couldn't I? That would work, yes. So one thousand centimeters cubed. Well, if I was going 1,000 centimeters to meters, meters over centimeters, it would be one over 100, yes? So that would mean 1,000 centimeters Q, 1,000 centimeters is, I'm going to cut out those two zero, is 10 meters, yes? How many times must I convert that? Why? Because it's cubed. Because it's cubed. So I would have to do this again. I would have to divide by 100 again, wouldn't I? Which would mean 0.1. And then I have to divide by 100 again, wouldn't I? Which would get me 0 0.001. Yes? So, as soon as my computer catches up, if that is meters cubed, that equals one liter. Can I now compare that and that? How? Because they're both cubed. So I have 344.25 meters cubed. And I want liters, yes? So liters goes on top. Meters cubed goes on the bottom. 0 0.001. One up there. The number's on the bottom, so it's division. How many decimal spaces do I have to move it? Three to get three, four, four, two, five. Uh-oh, what goes in the empty space? Zero. Zero. 344,250 liters. Wowza. Now, if you convert that wrongly, you get weird answers, right? For example, if you convert it only once, then you get something like 34 liters to fill a whole pool. <laughs> this cup is a liter. Will 34 of those fill a swimming pool? Of course not. That would be a stupid answer. You would hand it to me because you didn't think about it. Do you understand what I am saying? I have had kids say this answer is two. I am not joking. Kids in honors classes tell me it is two point something. Well, you tell me, you, I don't know, because they don't think. That would mean that when you go to Safe, when you buy a two liter of a pop and you share it with eight of your friends and everybody gets one cup, no problem, right? Right? But if I instead took that two liter and poured it into an empty pool, it would become like the Weasley's tent in the Wizarding World Cup. And it would fill the whole pool from one two liter, according to that person's thinking. And that was an honor student. 
because they aren't thinking. What are they doing instead? How did a person get a number that wrong? Not guessing. All they're doing is following steps. They didn't take the time to learn why the steps work, right? And it would have made sense to have a small estimate at the beginning, don't you think? A swimming pool is gigantic. Therefore, it must hold a lot of liters. Even if you've done no math whatsoever, you must be aware that how many liters go into a swimming pool. Think about how big they are, right? All right, next question. Some numbers. Anybody who did it, give me the number that you got for an answer. Well, so you can't have 0.25 of a puck. So 36,696. Corey, what do you got? I thought it required 2,233 goals to build net. 2,233. Okay, anybody got something else? I know, it's awesome. It's exactly what I want to have happen. Nobody else has an answer? Dana, what do you got? So 15,120, because you can't have 0.6 of a puck. What else? Anybody? Emma, did you do this one? 19,200 and blah, blah, blah. I didn't hear it. Let's call it 76. Wow. Why? What could have caused such disparity? I don't know. Because I'm betting they do use similar methods. Okay. I already know what Dana did because she showed me her book, so I'm going to skip over Dana. No offense. Emma, what did you do to come up with your number? Uh huh. So instead of 1.22, 1.83, and 1, you had 122 by 183 by 100. Yes. And volume of a puck, since the puck is a cylinder, is pi times uh, radius, which is uh, 3.81, 3.81 squared, times the height, which was 2.54. So you found the volume of a puck, and then you took that volume, I assume, and divided it by the volume of a puck. Everyone okay with that? Did you do something like that? Did you do something like that? I accidentally did the volume squared. That's okay. You, but you found two volumes and divided them. Yeah. Excellent. What did you do, Corey? Pretty much the same thing. Same thing. You found a volume and divided it, yes? And that makes sense, doesn't it? You're filling the net up, yeah? So I'm going to draw something that you guys will have seen. That is looking downwards on a hockey net. You know that when they're arguing about a goal and they show the hockey net with the camera right above it to see if the puck crossed the line. You've all seen this image, yes? Okay. So the puck would fill the net, yeah? What shape is a puck? What is right there? Empty space. Does the puck fill up that empty space? No. So can you do volume and volume? No. No. But you're still going to do volume. And here's what I mean. The net is how deep? Which of those numbers is the depth? 100. So the net is 100 centimeters deep. Yes? How wide is the net? Is the net taller or wider? Do you know or does it matter? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So what do you want to put here, 183 or 122? 183. 183, cool, okay. Oops, I wrote 180 like an idiot. Excellent, everybody cool with that? Okay. So the pucks will fill the net this way, agreed? And then they'll fill the net across, yes? How many pucks will fit here? You've got 100 centimeters. How wide's a puck? 7.62, so that's got to divide by 7.62 to get what answer? You've all got calculators, what's oh, the answer? Yeah. 
13, do I care about the decimal? No, because I'm not, I don't have a hacksaw out. I'm not cutting the puck in half. So it's gonna be 13 pucks this way, yeah? yeah? How many pucks will fit across here? How wide's the puck across that? No. No, that's still 7.62. Still 7.62, puck's a circle. So this divides also by 7.62, which is gonna give me 24 pucks, yes? So this rectangle on the ice is 13 by 24, yeah? How many pucks is that? Three hundred and twelve, right? But the pucks also stack up to fill the net, don't they? What's what's the height of the net? One hundred and twenty-two centimeters. Yes. What's the height of the puck? Two point five four. How many pucks can I go up and down with? 48. So I have 312 on the bottom, and that rectangle is going to stack 48 tall. So what math do I do? Hmm? Multiply. Yes. And what's the answer? 14,976. So who was closest? That person, whoever that was. Who's that? I don't remember. That's why I said that person, whoever that was. If I remembered, I would have said that person's name. But I'm old. Look at me. I got home at 3 in the morning. I got up at 6. Eric, he's going to go home and go, oh, my <laughs> Maybe. So I don't remember. Well, wait. I can figure it out. That person was the first person that gave me an answer, which was, and then that was Corey. And then that, Dana. Dana was the closest. Nice job. There you go. You figured it See, was that that hard? I'm like Sherlock Holmes. What can I say? Yeah. All this in brains, too. Sherlock Holmes. Huh? Sherlock Holmes was actually terrible at that. Yeah. Sherlock Holmes wasn't a real person. So he wasn't actually anything. Huh? So, moving along. Now, I assume, well, I know, I know what Dana did. Dana saw through the empty space thing, and what she did was she built a rectangle prism around each puck and used that 7.62 by uh, 2.54 by 7.62 and filled the net with those blocks like a Tetris game which is why she was very close. Everybody cool? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Next question. There's a reason I've given you this question. It is a stupid math class question. Why did I give it to you? Because I want you to see a way to solve it. Because a lot of guys, a lot of ladies that do these questions don't understand what's going on. First of all, is this a surface area or is it a volume question? Surface area. Why? Because it's going around the outside of the can, yeah? All right, so if it's a surface area question, the surface area of a cylinder, according to our uh, sheet, is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. What's the problem with that formula? Go. You don't need the top and bottom. You've all seen a can. There's no paper on the top and bottom. So part of that formula is useless to us. Which part? The 2 pi r squared because we're not doing circles. So all we care about is 2 pi r h. That's easy. Of course it's easy. 2 times pi times r, which is 4.25, times h, which is 12, gets me 102 pi. Is that the real world answer? Is that the math class answer? Math class. math class answer. You cannot call up your paper supplier and says, dude, I need 102 pi pieces of paper. He'll say, shut up. I don't get paid enough to do that. Yeah, exactly. That's above my pay grade. It's not like I went to grade 10 math. So are we done? No. Why not? Because I need a real world answer. Well, I need a real world answer. And what's the other problem? I'm making 100,000 cans of soup that day. Times by 100,000. Now, here's where we get into slight difficulty. My other class got in almost a big fight. 
Do you multiply this by 100,000? Or do you multiply your real world answer? by 100,000. Well, let's just take a moment here. Let's just hold up for a sec. Oh, wait. Wouldn't it be the same answer? Damn right it's the same answer. Why? Because it's multiplication. Because it's multiplying. Oh, my God. The real world answer, just again, you should always get an estimate. This is approximately 100 times 300, yes? Yeah. Right? Everyone agree? Or 100 times 3. 300. I was wanting to say 300. This is approximately 300, yes? Yeah. And we need 100,000 of it, yes? So how many more zeros do I need? Anymore. How many? I don't know. Yes, you do. How many? Five. five. One, two, three, four, five. Which is approximately 30 million, yes? Holy banana. So I know that's going to be my approximate answer. So do this, 102 times pi times 100,000 on your calculator, and you're going to get 32 million and something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I just said, 32 million. 32 billion? Yeah. 102 times pi times 100,000. You're going to get 32 million-ish because the pi has decimals, right? Now... What happens if I do this up here? There's five zeros, yes? So what happens to that 102 and those five zeros? It gets five zeros, doesn't it? Yeah. So the 102 gets five zeros. One, two, one, two, three. That's 10,200,000, isn't it? 10,200,000 times pi. Pi is three, isn't it? Yeah. What's 10 million times three? 30 million, right? So does it matter what order we work in? No. How did you classify them? They were like, exactly like you guys were. I said, okay, what do we do? And half the class said, well, you multiply 102 by 100,000. Half the class said, you gotta get your real world answer. Like, which you have to do? And then they yelled at each other for a while. Oh, why did we get there? Did you just sit down and watch eat popcorn a little more? No. No. I did exactly what I did with you. Why would I laugh at you guys? Because we're funny. <laughs> I don't laugh at your math skills. You guys are good at math. You have enough, you have enough confidence issues at math without me laughing at you. I thought we were talking about their argument. Yeah, but their argument was based on math issues. You had no idea we were talking about math, did you, Ash? <laughs> See what I did there? Never mind. I laughed at you. Because you said I should laugh at the other class. That wasn't a real laugh at you. I know it didn't. <laughs> All right. So I got 32 million, yeah? 32 million what? Tacos. 32 million centimeters squared, yes? Of paper. Stupid answer, yes? Is that a real life answer? You call up somebody and say, dude... I need 32 million square centimeters. Would you say, dude, Mr. Myers drives 34 million centimeters to work every day? No, you say 34 kilometers, yeah? Okay, so we're not going to say 32 million centimeters. What would be the smart measurement to use? Kilometers squared? Meters squared. So if I'm going to convert this to meters, I have to... Divide by 100, don't I? How many times? Two. Why only twice this time? Because it's squared, not cubed. Cube. So I get rid of those two zeros. I get rid of those two zeros. And I need 3,200 meters squared of paper. Everyone agree? I did not try to kerfuffle your mind. Not even a little bit. No, I didn't. Now, next question. Estimate... How much of the classroom walls can be covered with these labels? Now, let's pretend we are not on the third floor with the awesome vaulted ceiling. Let's pretend that the room ends at that wooden border. Everybody cool? And let's pretend the room is a perfect, perfect walls. There's no shelves. There's no little area here. Everybody okay with that? All right. Now, 
for you to estimate, you have to then guess the measurements of the room, don't you? Yeah. On the very first day, we estimated stuff. Is this room four kilometers wide? Yes. No, of course not. Who would like to give an estimate of the width of this room? Anyone. Width of the room. Just give me an estimate. It's an estimate. You can't really be wrong, but if you say three kilometers, I'm going to laugh at you. Ten yards. <laughs> Anybody got a metric measurement? Ten meters. Okay, you want to go ten meters? Let's check. Meters. Who's going to count the clicks? Eight meters. I, I got, got eight meters. Do I got anything else? Twelve. I got a twelve meter. Anything 15. else? Thirteen. Fifteen. Fifteen. That doesn't have weight. Okay, now you're just getting carried away with the auction Stop part of things. Me. Give me a real answer. Eight. Twelve. Eight. Twelve. Eight. Twelve. Eight. twelve. Eight and twelve. Who's counting? I'm counting. Okay. Not, that doesn't count. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. oof. Eight and a little bit. Are we happy with that being about half a meter? Eight and a half. I don't know. Are we happy with eight and a half? Eight and a half. Okay. So we know that our room is 8.5 this way, right? What is it this way? Who wants to guess this way? Is it a square? Kind of. No, I said assume the walls are flat. Okay. And assume no windows. Uh, right? We're covering the walls. Pretend we're in one of those crap-ass rooms in Yale with no windows. Six and a half. Nine Six and a half is a guess. Do I have any other guesses? Seven. I have a seven. What? A 9.5. point five. A 9.5? Five? All right, here we go. Who's counting? Me. Ready, Eric? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is like and a bit. Aha! So are we happy with seven and a half? Yes, I am. I feel like Andy just started measuring things. All right. You can be a professional room measurer. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a job. Okay. Now, do those two measurements give me any answers right now? No. Why not? Because that's the floor. Are we putting paper on the floor? No, no. Where are the walls? Up the walls. We said we're going up to that piece of wood, yeah? I need help because, as you all know, I am only 5 foot 7. I am. Oh, yeah, send the giraffe. Good job. I'll do the dangerous part. Hey, whoa, that's dangerous. Oh man. Oh man. Oh my god, man. If you're, if you're old, be careful, don't fall. What? Shut up! <laughs> Corey, hold it steady! Corey! 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 Corey, you're bad at this. Okay, Corey, go to the throw the ground now, Corey! Go, 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 go! Someone called 911 just in case he falls. Just in case he can't get up with it. 144? Exactly ish? No. Okay, that's 144 inches. What is that? Why don't you just run your clicker thing down the wall? Shh. I want to climb. Catch me, Corey. I'm just kidding. He made it! So, of course you did. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Every time I do a push-up, I'm not pushing up. I'm pushing the earth down. No, it's actually true. You all are. That's how you walk. You push on the earth, the earth pushes back to you. That's why you're able to walk. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So when I do that, the table just went down, the earth just went down a minuscule amount. So you're saying if you do that hard enough, you can. If everybody on the planet got together in one spot and crowded together as close as they could and jumped, the earth would actually move. Whoa. A very little bit. Oh. <laughs> Because for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. We talked about this. That's how you get the billion dollars to get back in your spaceship. I don't think I was here for that. That wasn't this class? I don't think I was here for Oh, okay. You're in space. You have a bag holding a billion dollars. You're floating. Your spaceship is over by Shamir. But your airline's been cut. How do you get back to your spaceship? You have to throw away the money. Because when you throw away the billion dollars, that pushes you towards your ship. If it's just a two, you can actually point the air in the opposite direction and 
No, dude, the air is coming from your ship. You don't have air in your suit. That's why you're in trouble. Because your airline has been cut. If there was air in your suit, you'd just be like, plunk. <laughs> I'm a billionaire floating in space. Again, it doesn't matter. It's Again, this comes back to that argument. When is this ever going to happen in real life? That's not the point. The point is you have to understand the concept. What? Maybe. I'm not that much of a physicist. And yet. Don't you worry. Unit 5 spends a whole bunch of time on physics. All right. So I was at 144 inches, yes? Yeah. Which is 12 feet, yes? Yeah. Why is that a problem? It's not metric. So we're going to change that to meters, which is times 0.3048. So 12 feet is how many meters? I don't know. You have a calculator, Eric. We've been through this. Christian, pardon me? 3.65. So our walls are 3.65. So what do I have to do with 7.5 and 3.65? This is one of the walls. It's flat. It's the net. So what do I do with these two? Multiply 7.5 by 3.65 and then do what with that? Multiply by 4. Multiply by 4? 1, 2, 3, 4. Dude, they're different length walls. Oh, that's right. Never mind. So what do I multiply by? 2. 2. So I do this, that times that times uh, 2, and then this, 8.5 times 3.65 times 2. And what do I get when I add it all up? Uh, oh, I have a We've been through this, Eric. You still have a calculator. Just like you had at the beginning of the class. Just like you'll have at the end of the class. What? 114.25 meters squared is our walls, yes? Are we happy with that? Doesn't matter. Are we happy with about 115? Yes. How many square meters of paper do we have? 3,200. How many times can I cover my walls? Two and a little bit. Two and a little bit. It's 3,000. So how many times can I cover the walls? Like 27 times. Right? Great. 27 times. Everybody with me? Why would I give you this question? Again, it's not about when you would ever lick a soup label and stick it on your wall. I do that now. It's not about that. It's about the thought process you need to get to the answer. Just like in real life, you will never lie down on a bench and lift up a bar with metal attached to it 10 times and then put it down. And yet, all of you go to the gym and do bench pressing. The argument of when are you going to do this in real life is the lamest argument in the world because you all do things all the time that you would never do in real life, right? How many people go to the gym? Lots of people. What do they do at the gym? They ride a bike that goes nowhere. When will that help them in real life? Oh my God, there's a bear chasing me! Oh well. Ah, uh, I'm going to fix that bear. I'm going to get on the treadmill. <laughs> Damn, it's snowing. I'm going to get on the elliptical and cross-country ski away from the bear. <laughs> I'm still not moving. And then, even better, why do you go to the gym? For exercise. How'd you get there? I drove. <laughs> What'd you do at the gym? I ran on the treadmill. How much did that cost you? Oh, it cost me about 50 bucks a month. How'd you get to the gym? I drove. Run there. But it gets cold. But, Ash, you hear what I am saying, and yet, hopefully you have understood that I really don't want to hear the question, when am I ever going to do this in real life? Because it doesn't matter. You're all willing to do 
millions of things you're not going to do in real life. When are you ever going to be controlling a fake person who is taking headshots at other fake people? Never. And yet you all play Call of Duty 12 or whatever number they're up to. I don't care. They're all stupid. They're equally lame. At least go out and do paintball. At least. No, because that's expensive. All right. Speaking of paintball, I am leading the charge to get those kind of bikes into the Olympics. What the? <laughs> well, is that related to paintball at all? I am tired of watching these dudes and ladies on BMX bikes doing 1080s, going 80,000 feet in the air. It'll be in the Olympics soon because the Olympics are just catching up to the X Games because they realize that nobody wants to see Javelin anymore. They want to see people doing jumps on bikes. Actually, people do want to see Javelin. They want to see the Javelin stick into a judge. Same reason anybody watches NASCAR. You don't really want to watch cars drive around a circle for an hour and a half. You are watching it for the crash. That's why I NASCAR is just stupid. You're just going around. Yes, I know. That's what I just said. Thank you. Um, Yes, another left turn. Anyways, they're too good. So I think these should be the things they have in the half pipe. These should be the things that they ride down the mountain on. That would be badass. And they should have to do it in old Victorian outfits with big top hats and stuff. I know. You'd watch it. Don't tell me you wouldn't. The Victorian X Games. You guys would be like, yeah! Women having to do the this, this slope style and those big poofy hoop skirt things. You'd all watch that and it'd be worth millions. Yes, I know you would. Anyway, seriously, folks. Only a couple of people did this question. I want everybody to do it now. I know. I'm aware of that. Also because those things had metal wheels. They weren't rubber tires. That kind of bike. That's what it's called, a penny farthing. Because the small wheel reminded people of a penny and the big wheel reminded people of a farthing, a coin from Britain back in the day. Back in Mr. Myers' young days? No, not in Mr. Myers' young days. Clown. Back in my day, we didn't have no fully suspension bikes. We walked and we loved it. It is circumference. Connor, well done. Yeah. Connor, you did something smart? Connor sits back there and gets a million right answers. And I never publicize it very much because he's very quiet about it. And all of you are like, Connor? And I'm like, Connor. And if I were Connor, I'd be doing this to all of you. That's inappropriate. No, it's not. It's just fine. I'm pointing. <laughs> Anyways, Connor, it absolutely is circumference. How do you find the circumference of that circle? Oh, I want to use a different color. How do I find that circumference? Same way you find every circumference. You look on your data booklet if you don't remember this very simple and important formula. What is it? Uh, pi diameter. Circumference equals pi D. Do you have a D for that big wheel? Yeah. What is it? It's 52. 52. 52 pi. Real life answer? Or useless answer? Useless answer. Useless answer. Doesn't tell me how far I go. How far did you ride your bike? How far did you ride on the treadmill today? 52 pi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, what do I got to do with that? What is it? Great. So, it's 163 inches. Yes? Real life answer. Yeah? What is it in feet and inches? What do you got to do with 163 inches to get it to feet? Divide by 12. What is it? 13.58 if you made it 163, yes? Wait a second. What if you left it as 163.36 blah, 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 and divided that by 12? What would you get? A very slightly different answer, wouldn't you? What happened up here? Because we rounded this to 163, like all of you wanted to do, yes? 13.6. It's going to give you 13.6666, isn't it? 
Exactly. Oh, okay. Okay. So, that, what's wrong with that number? Oh, decimal. Decimal? decimal. Right. So that point six, what's half a foot? Six inches. So point five, 13.5 would be 13 feet, six inches, yes? It's a little bit more. It's one tenth, one, it's actually 11 one hundredths more, isn't it? 11 one hundredths is pretty darn close to one twelfth, isn't it? So it's 13 feet and how many inches? Six is half. 13 feet, 7 inches is a real good guess. Everybody with me? Who just said no? Oh, okay. Now, I need it in meters and centimeters. So I had 163.36 inches, yes? How do I turn that to meters and centimeters? I need it in, I can do inches to centimeters, can't I? So if I'm doing the fraction, I want centimeters, yeah? Yes. And I have inches, yeah? So what goes here, the 1 or the 2.54? 2.54. 2 Since that's on top, what do I do? Uh, times Multiply. So what do I get? 414.93. Uh, 414.93 centimeters, yes? Damn. What do I want? Meters. meters and centimeters. What do I do with the decimal in meters? From centimeters to meters. I move it two spaces. Four meters, 14 centimeters. Or, yeah, 14.93, you'd probably round it to 15, yeah? So, four meters, 15 centimeters, which is also 4.15 meters, yes? Everybody's cool to there, yeah? Okay, great. If I want to go a kilometer on my bike, my penny farthing, how many times I got to turn those pedals? How many? Too much. I know I'm going to go 1.5 or 4.15 meters per turn. How far do I want to go? 1.96. One what? One kilometer. Which is? 1,000 meters. 1, meters divided by 4.15. How many times I got to turn that wheel, Louie? 241 pedals to turn that far. Yeah. Now that you know how to do it, you guys do the bottom one. How many times is the penny wheel going to turn? Uh, oh, what the? You, you, you giving me away, Shamir? You already did it. Wait, Fine. Shamir, what did you say? What is it, Shamir? Uh, 697. 697. Now. I got the answer. In earlier classes, some kids said 699. Another kid said 696. Are they all right? Yeah. Yes. Why? What is causing this discrepancy? Where are they rounding? Not wrong rounding. Where are they rounding? Different rounding. Where in the question they are rounding? In a perfect world, where would you all do your rounding? At the very end, you would leave as much on your calculator with all the decimals that you can and round at the very end. Everybody understand? In a perfect world. If you're the people that are sending the rocket to Pluto, you don't want to round till the end. Because if you make a rounding error on Earth that's a millimeter off, by the time you've gone 20 million kilometers, that millimeter is going to be really far, you're going to miss Pluto. Picking up what I'm putting down? Accuracy is important. So practice now keeping everything on your calculator until the end. Everybody with me? But that being said, I would accept all of those answers because of course you would have shown me work. Right? Yes, Kingston, go to the bathroom. Will you just put your hand up? It's not bathroom time? Oh, oh, sorry, I apologize. No, I forgot to put water in my kettle, so I did not make tea today. Uh -huh. I know, I'm sad about it myself. Ooh. What are you going to do? Um, so we found the answer. Now, listen please, class is over in 26 minutes. I am going to give you your quiz. Here's what you need for your quiz. Data book, 
If you don't have your data booklet, I'm going to put all the stuff you need on the screen behind me. Calculator, pencil, eraser. Now, also, what? You can use your phone as long as you want until Tuesday when I give you a real test. So you better have had a calculator to practice with by then. Because you can't use your phone on tests. So, as I was saying before we got off track there, um, what was I saying? Why are you paying yourself? Oh, when you finish your quiz, because some of you will, it's only five questions. When you finish your quiz, go back to your Outrageous Orchid books, go to page, I think it's 41. The page entitled Measurement Review. What was the review page? Is it page 41? Hold up. 42. No. 44. Thank you, Dana or Shamir, whoever said that. I only heard it from over there. It might have been Lena even. You go to page 44 and you start working. Listen to me closely. Some of you are going to take the whole 25 minutes left in class to do this quiz. That's fine. I don't care. I'm not putting a time limit on you this time like I did last time. All right. If you finish your quiz, you start working on this. Tomorrow in class, we will mark your quiz. Do not do this for homework. You will work on it tomorrow in class because tomorrow is a short day. With any luck, we will get 99% finished tomorrow. We will mark it first thing Friday. Four marks this is the first thing you're doing that actually counts. Friday, we will finish this. And we will start background to trigonometry Friday. Mm. Nobody likes tests Monday. So your other two classes of your peers have requested their test be Tuesday. Being aware that that means we have to start unit two on Monday. Are you all amenable to that? I don't like testing you on Monday either. I've been teaching for 20 years. I've given lots of tests on Mondays. The same test given on Monday to the same class the next year scores significantly lower. I don't like giving tests on Monday, but some kids say, I don't want to start anything new. But as of right now, I'm testing everyone Tuesday. Sounds good. All right. So we are testing on Tuesday. Does everybody understand what they are doing? <laughs> Quiz, start on this, finish this tomorrow. Mark it Friday. Gouda? Great. Desks cleared, please. And here... That is not the right data booklet. I'm going to give you the quiz. No, like, do we give it to you? Uh, yeah, give it to me because we're going to mark it tomorrow because some people are going to need the, 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 the spit it out Myers the whole day. Good job. Don't be that way. Here is all the information you need for this quiz. It's got all the formulas of the shapes that are on it, and it's got all the conversions if you don't have your data booklet. Because I'm running out of data booklets, because I did say I'm punching holes in them, you need to keep them. There is your quiz. I did all this in brain too. <laughs> yes, yes, I'll be appearing here till June. Tip your waitress. <laughs> Wait, who's our waitress? It's a joke. Take one, pass them back. I'll pick up the extras at the back of the room. When you get it, start. Oh. Make sure you put your name on it. Make sure you read what the question is asking. If it asks for surface area, don't tell me the volume. If it asks for volume, don't tell me the surface area.
Okay, I'm a big liar. The last, the back question has two. So there, I'm not a big liar. You can't count to five. <laughs> huh? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Five. Why? Oh, oh like, the, like Sesame Street. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Da, na, na, na. You guys know that? You don't remember that from Sesame Street? Kids don't watch Sesame Street anymore. It's not right. Sesame Street was good TV. I got to pause this. People think.